the iPhone SE 2, or that's probably not what it's gonna be called, but you know what I mean by that. A refresh to that two-year-old iPhone SE. It started off as just kind of this concept, this idea a lot of people were having. What if Apple finally updated that iPhone 5 looking design? And it's now grown to this actually fairly confirmed rumor. It's gotten to the point now where if it doesn't come out at WWDC, I'm actually gonna be a little bit surprised. I'll be like, really? After all the leaks, after all the rumors, it's not happening. I would be genuinely disappointed if it turns out there's not one in existence. Especially now given we have 11 different model numbers of devices that are going to be shipping with iOS 11 before the release of the new iPhone. So at least a couple of these 11 model numbers have to be some form of SE refresh, right? So when I started predicting what I thought the iPhone SE 2 was gonna be, I was just thinking kind of a condensed portable version of the iPhone 8. So we got the glass back, we got the A11 chip, got a true tone display, no headphone jack, better camera and whatnot. But then suddenly all these new leaks started coming forward and I was like, oh God, what? No, 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 we didn't talk about this. In all of the concepts and all the renders we had for the new version of the SE, it was all about making the front the same, but updating the internals and the back and even the sides a little bit. It was never about making literally just a smaller version of the iPhone 10. So I saw these rumors and I saw these concepts of the bezel iPhone SE and I was kind of like, Haha, no, that's not happening. That's impossible. And then case manufacturers started designing cases for this design as well. And I was like, okay, wait, that's, that means you're investing money in this design. Then companies that make screen protectors started unveiling and showing the marketing for their screen protectors that go on top of this design of the iPhone SE. And that's when I started really going, oh God, um, is this really happening? I thought this was kind of a joke and now we're seeing these types of concepts that are just basically saying the new iPhone SE is just going to be a smaller version of the iPhone 10 and I'm like well you know I'm not mad per se I'm just very confused the purpose of this phone is to appeal to budget users people who want a smaller screen why make the screen bigger on a phone that's catering to budget users and I have several problems with this design as well in order to get that bezel-less look you have on the iPhone 10 you have to use an OLED display because if you didn't know this the iPhone 10 has a curved OLED screen at the bottom so that they can attach the ribbon is in the part of the phone that attaches to the circuit board on the back of the iPhone 10 and not on the front. Meaning that if these concepts somehow are actually true, it has to be an OLED phone. This cannot be an LCD. That's going to drive up the price of this thing. That display manufacturing technique, which by the way, no other Android phones are trying to replicate. We've seen lots of Android phones adopt the notch and they're trying to adopt the bezel-less design, but no other Android company has went ahead and caved and done the iPhone 10 method of bezel design that is having a bezel that is the same size on all sides of the phone with the exception of the notch. All Android companies have just agreed that that makes the phone too expensive to manufacture. It's too risky. Even when they're charging a thousand dollars plus for a phone like Huawei, they still have a little bit of a chin for manufacturing prices to stay down. So the idea that Apple would do the iPhone 10 design again, right before the new iPhone 10s, the 10 and the 10 plus come out right in September is just mind boggling to me. It doesn't make any sense. And on top of that, we have even started talking about adopting a notch on an iPhone SE sized phone. Just because the phone is smaller, it does not mean that the front facing camera, the dot projector, the IR blaster, all that stuff cannot suddenly become smaller because it's on a smaller phone. Meaning that if you are going to have a notch on the SE, it's going to take up just as much space as it does on the iPhone 10. We even got some pictures of leaked parts for this new iPhone SE that show the notch on the top and actually are showing that it would intrude on most of the top of the display in the little ears, if you will on the side of the screen that go upwards are taking up just a tiny bit of the screen, which I don't understand how the UI can work with a design like this. There's not even room in those little ears for like the time or the battery or the cellular connection. How could these be possible? Well, one thing I started thinking about was a lot of the pictures that phone case manufacturers are tweeting out or sending out are showing how their case can wrap around to the back of the iPhone SE. But when you think about it, it actually makes no reference to how the case makes any kind of difference on the display technology. They're basically guessing on what the SE2 front is going to look like because whether or not the front is going to look like the old way or the new way, their cases would still fit on an iPhone SE design. So it is kind of a great way to just kind of shout out your product is tweet your product being manufactured with this impossibly designed iPhone. A lot of people are going to click on that link and indirectly, a lot of people are going to start buying your phone cases because they think you have inside information or you're just getting a lot of publicity. The screen protector companies though are harder to dispute because they're designing 
protectors that are going from edge to edge of this phone, and they do not have a home button at the bottom, meaning that this would be a home buttonless SE, and that's just hard to imagine. But if these rumors were true, it would be kind of cool to see an iPhone SE with a bezel-less design and somehow incorporating Face ID into a smaller notch, because a lot of these marketing pictures have notches that do not take up much room and they're able to stay even smaller than they are on the iPhone 10. If these rumors by some sheer chance happen to be true, it kind of destroys the purpose of the iPhone SE. The purpose there being it is a cheap phone, it is a small phone for a lot of people who still prefer that screen size. And on top of that, it's the cheapest iPhone you can get, and it's not a terrible one. Starting at $350 currently, I was imagining the new SE2 to start at like 400 maybe, maybe 450 but still, appealing to budget users. And if this concept is true with the bezel-less design, incorporating this OLED display, incorporating the curved corners, incorporating a method of Face ID somehow, maybe Apple was able to mimic Face ID with just the front-facing camera like OnePlus 5 does on their phones, or like Face Unlock on the Galaxy S9 series. Maybe Apple adopted some kind of fake version of Face ID for this smaller iPhone 10. Again, this phone would still end up costing $600, $700. Just because it's a little bit smaller doesn't mean any part of the manufacturing process is any cheaper. And again, why would you encourage a bunch of people to buy a premium flagship smartphone just a couple months before the new one comes out? Apple was already kind of pushing it with the product Red 8 Plus. Now waiting until June to release a premium smartphone? Very, very confusing. And that's why personally, I do not believe these rumors. And I have a theory about them that has no evidence to back them up, but I believe a kind of similar thing happened last year before the iPhone 10 came out. I believe these rumors of the bezel design and of this weird notch look iPhone SE are actually leaks and rumors from Apple. Apple is releasing fake rumors and fake leaks to try to sway people off from what the iPhone SE is actually going to be like. Now, I kind of understand if you don't agree with me on that, because why would Apple make such a premium looking design and beautiful looking design ultimately to disappoint everyone in the long run? But the opposite happened last year when we got a lot of leaked images of this really ugly looking iPhone 8. It had the Apple logo on it. We even saw pictures of shipments of it, like Palette of it with the dual camera going up and down but still retaining in a metal back. It was throwing a lot of people off and a lot of people were assuming this was where the iPhone lineup was going because there were lots and lots of leaked pictures of this ugly looking iPhone 8. Luckily, it turned out to be false and we didn't even see Android phones that made weird mock-ups like that and it turned out that that mock-up, that leak we kept seeing, wasn't anyone's phone. It wasn't Apple's phone. It wasn't some clone's phone. So my theory is that Apple was releasing pictures of that phone to try to throw people off of the actual iPhone 10 rumors. It didn't really work, but they tried. Maybe Apple's trying again by releasing a lot of iPhone SE2 fake renders and fake concepts to throw people off so that when the actual thing comes out, there's actually an element of surprise. However, the actual SE having the same four inch screen, not the bezel-less design, retaining touch ID, and just having a glass back and an A11 chip, would that make people really excited because we got hyped up for a bezel-less design in the first place? I'm not really sure. Maybe it's Apple's way of just kind of smacking leakers in the face and say, don't believe what you here, all right? Not everything's real. Apple, we know, is cracking down really, really hard on trying to prevent leaks from coming out of Apple. One way of really cluttering leaks is to just kind of riddle the market with fake stuff, even if it may be better than what actually is going to happen. Maybe it will encourage leakers and people who report on rumors to maybe stop believing in them. And currently, I don't believe in that. I don't think this is the iPhone SE we're going to see. I believe it is going to be form factor wise identical to the last one. The front of this new iPhone SE is going to look the same. Four inch screen, touch ID sensor, Sensor, still a home button, of course, with a glass back, no headphone jack, and an A11 chip, and a better camera. Maybe even with the capability of 4K at 60, which would be cool. It's gonna come in three colors, space gray, silver, and gold, and it'll likely retail for $400 to $450. That's my guess. I would not believe these bezel-less designs. It seems very out there. It seems very hypocritical for that lineup to make a budget version of a cheap phone. So again, I wanna reiterate that to all of you. Don't believe everything you hear, because there are a lot of leaked images and leaked rumors that can get a lot of traction, but still end up not happening. But Please let me know what you think of the iPhone SE2 rumors or what it's actually going to be called down in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. And if you came here to hear about the iPhone SE, definitely click away now. Your time has been well spent. But I want to give a little shameless plug now to people who have Amazon Prime. Do you like what we're doing here at Talos? Do you want to support the network? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can head over to twitch.com and subscribe to us with a service called Twitch Prime on our Talos of Gaming page, which we just became an affiliate for. It costs you a grand total of nothing. This is absolutely free. No extra charge, but you can directly support the Telosive Network just by having a Twitch Prime membership and hitting that subscribe button on our Telosive Gaming page, which the link is in the description. It doesn't take long to set up. I just figured if you have an Amazon
Amazon Prime account, and a lot of you do, I would be super, super grateful to get your support from that, especially given it costs you guys nothing. You have to add nothing to your credit card bill, your debit card bill. You're paying for Amazon Prime, might as well have some of it go to a creator you like. So you can do that on our Twitch page down in the description. Anyway, this is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.